Hello everybody, and welcome to another edition of History with Mr. Me. And today, we're learning the truth about Pocahontas. You can't handle the truth! Oh, we can, and we will. Let's go. I was five years old when the Pocahontas movie came out. Very soon after, I had the VHS. Everything I knew pretty much into adulthood about Pocahontas came from the movie, and I'm just so, so glad it was all true. Did you know she never fell in love with John Smith? Did you know she never even saved his life? Did you know her real name isn't even Pocahontas? Oh man, I feel like, wow! Buckle in, cause here comes the true colors of the wind. You learn things you never knew. So maybe the most surprising truth of all is our first one. Pocahontas wasn't even her name. That's not my name! Pocahontas was a nickname given to her by her father, Chief Powhatan, when she was a young girl. Pocahontas was actually her mother's name, who sadly died during childbirth. It's important to know that in Pocahontas' tribe, people were given multiple names, a more public name and then a more private name for friends. Her more public name was Amanu, and her more private name was Matoaka, which is what she went by to friends. So why is she known as Pocahontas? John Smith. When John Smith, who was an important part of the Jamestown colony, first met Pocahontas, she was between 10 and 12 years old in 1608. So when he wrote about her, he called her Pocahontas. His writing propelled them both into history, and for her, she's not known by her name. Stick around in it a little bit, you'll learn she also went by another name later in life. On to the next truth. Roses are red, the corn moon is blue. She never loved John Smith, and that is not a lie. Pocahontas and John Smith were never a thing. Let's just put that out there. When he met her, she was between 10 and 12, and he was around 28. That would not look near as romantic as the blossoming love I saw between them as a child. So why do we think they did? Well, it's thought that writers in the 1800s simply thought that made a better story. So they lied. They made it up. The truth is, she was eventually married to Coquelum. You may remember him from the movies as the guy with the great personality. They even had a son together. In her tribe, women had freedom when it came to marriage. He was not her only husband though. Stick around a little longer and you'll learn about that as well as her time in captivity. On to the next truth. It's one of the most dramatic scenes in the movie. John Smith is about to get his head smashed in. As Chief Powhatan raises his club, Pocahontas throws her body on top of his, proclaims her love. I love him. And saves his life. Yeah, so this didn't happen. Why does everyone think it did? Well, John Smith is a liar. How dare you? Oh, I dare. He's a liar. What is true is that John Smith was captured and held captive for a few weeks. In his writings, he claims that while on the verge of being clubbed to death, Pocahontas threw her body over his to save him. A couple things don't add up here. One. That isn't how they would have killed a prisoner. They most likely would have burned him to death. Two. The chief wouldn't have stopped because his 10 to 12 year old daughter said so. She wouldn't have even been allowed there. Three. John Smith didn't even mention this in his early writings. This story would have happened between 1607 and 1608, and this story doesn't appear until 1624. It was a little fishy. John Smith was famous, even back then, for embellishing stories. He was even made fun of for it. Satirical newspapers were made about it. This isn't even the only story he wrote where a beautiful girl saves his life. Come on. While he may be an important guy in early American history, it doesn't mean he was a good guy. To me, he just comes off as kind of a creep, and that's coming from a guy with a quarantine stash. Also, who would have thought he looks more like the real life Mel Gibson than the cartoon John Smith? Moving on. So what happened where the movie leaves off? Well, we're about to find out. So this part gets sad. War had broken out between the natives and the colonists. And in 1603, Pocahontas was kidnapped and used as a bargaining chip by the colonists. She would never see her father, husband, or son again. Some historians say Coquelum was killed shortly after, while others dispute that claim. While held captive, Pocahontas was forced to convert to Christianity, take the name Rebecca, and be a goodwill ambassador for the colonists. She was even forced to wear English clothes. She married the man responsible for tobacco in the US, John Rolfe. Whether this was out of love or forced is debated, but they also had a son together who was actually born before their wedding. It's also debated whether or not John Rolfe is the father. The rest of her life, she was kind of just an object of fascination for colonists and Europeans. On the way back to Virginia from England in 1617, a trip in which she'd met the king and queen, she fell ill and suddenly died at the age of 21. There is speculation that she was poisoned. It's hard to believe so much history and myth about her comes from at most an 11 year span. Pocahontas deserved more than the last years of life she had. As a young girl, she translated for the colonists and was noted for even bringing food to Jamestown, even staving off starvation for some. For her to be treated the way she was is incredibly unfortunate. It is thought she was submissive to the colonists and did what they asked for the betterment of her people in hopes it would improve relations. That is very heroic, not like John Smith and his made-up fairy tales. Her story is most known as whitewashed history, and the truth, while not pretty, is the truth. 
We need to be open and accepting of our early history. That's the truth about Pocahontas. You'll find links to my previous videos in the description below. If you want to keep track of videos I post, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.